Tonight, most want to lie ventures further into the darkness to investigate a most historic place in the centre of what was decades ago hailed one of London's most violent areas. The whole building, its ground floor and first floor, are all said to be plagued by an abundance of paranormal and supernatural phenomena. Join us on another enthralling expedition into the unknown, tonight on Most Haunted Live. Night three of Most Haunted Live at Halloween. I'm David Bull and once again I'm in our command centre of our paranormal investigation deep in the east end of London in what some say is one of the most haunted cities in the world. Now this whole area has been plagued and terrorised by bizarre phenomena for centuries. Two nights ago we began our quest at Tower Bridge, the very picturesque landmark. Now, last night we moved to Commercial Tavern in Commercial Street, again in the East End. And there, the team seemed to encounter various spirits, one of which appeared to be Joseph Merrick, the Elephant Man, who was said to have hidden in the tunnels of Commercial Tavern. And Derek also appeared to be possessed by a man called Jacob Hills. Well, it certainly caught your imagination because we've had texts and emails from around the world, from New York, Chicago and New Mexico. They're all talking about what happened last night. This is what happened. Right. I got a feeling of a stabbing. Right. It was an attack. Oh, oh, f oh, f oh. Okay. Is there you go, Joseph. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, look at that. It's really clear now you said it. Is this your energy? For whatever reason. <laughs> what was it? Are you Joseph Merrick? Yes. Where are you? I'm here! You can see me through. Yes. So, that was last night. Now, on to tonight's location. Again, this location tonight is very different from the others. It has nearly 1,000 years of history associated with this location. It's a place of punishment, of incarceration and torture. Let's find out more about it as we meet our investigation team, because tonight they are already on site. So let's say a very big hello to Yvette Fielding, Derek Okora, Kieran O'Keefe and the rest of the team. Good evening. Well, a very good evening to all of you. I have to start, Yvette, by talking about uh, yesterday and this name that appeared, Joseph Merrick, which seems an extraordinary thing to happen. What, what's your feelings about that? Well, for us, it was, it, it was just something that just came about. We were using the planchette, um, which is a piece of wood and a pen in the top. And we couldn't believe, believe our luck. For me, I've used the planchette many, many times. But it actually really did spell out this particular name. We had the first name Joseph and the surname Merrick. Um, now I've used, as I've said, the, the planchette many times. And I've never had a first name and a surname come out like that so clearly. And the, the great thing is, is that none of our team, apart from myself and Kieran, knew of this surname or indeed the, the first name. Uh, so I actually stepped out. And um, lo and behold, Kath stepped in and it started to spell out the surname. So we were all amazed that we got this name. Now, about tonight's location, because I, I sort of mentioned it has nearly a thousand years of history on this site, but actually the site's been used for various things throughout the year. Without uh, telling us too much, give us a little more detail about the location you're in tonight. 
The location, um, obviously you won't be able to tell because of the night vision cameras, but I, I can't actually see my hand in front of my face. All I'm looking at now is a little red light, which I know to be the camera with John standing behind it. Um, it's pitch black. Um, downstairs there are uh, lots of rooms leading off from each other, but above there's a huge wide open space and it's very, very atmospheric, particularly upstairs. So the atmosphere is wild, we're really, really wanting to crack on with things, so hurry up David! <laughs> okay, well time to get on with it then, so prepare yourself for tonight's investigation and again, once again, good luck from all of us here in the studio. Very good luck. Thanks David, thank you. Now, the role of this studio is to try and make sense of what's going on on location, to collate the information, the data that we get from the team. And to do that, I'm joined by a very august panel of experts. They are, of course, our very own parapsychologist, Dr. Matthew Smith, and with him, medium and astrologer, David Wells. Well, very good evening to both of you. Um, let me start, first of all, uh, with you, David Wells, for a change. Last night, this Joseph Merrick, what do you make of that? Well, like Yvette said, the planchette was really interesting. It was behaving um, in a way that we haven't seen before, because normally it twists and turns. It was very, very definite. Um, I mean, I don't know much about the Elephant Man, only I guess what everyone else seen uh, from the film. And um, from what I gather, he was an extraordinarily intelligent man. And as in life, as I always say, as in death. Let's ask our open-minded uh, sceptic, what did you make of it? Um, well, again, I'm hoping it's not too good to be true, because I think I was, I mean, before anyone else noticed it was Joseph, I was saying, well, you know, it seems to be spelling out the name Joseph. And I think it was also interesting because, um, again, when we making sense of it, I was thinking, well, if it's an elephant, I thought it was John Merrick. So it, the, the usual kind of lay knowledge is that the name is, is John Merrick. So that was kind of interesting. I think, you know, I'd want to kind of be more confident that nobody around that table at all could have known that. There wasn't somebody maybe thinking of a name that was going to come through. Um, and it was interesting that we, at least Yvette, thought to say, OK, well, I'm going to take myself out of, 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 the, of the table because she had heard the discussion in the studio. And they got something that looked a bit like the kind of the name Merrick. So intriguing. It doesn't necessarily convince me that it was something paranormal going on. I'm, um, I'm very happy with intriguing, to be honest. No, no, intriguing, yes. Well, intriguing, it's better than being interesting. But it was <laughs> it definitely certainly is. It certainly is. Now, tonight's location, you actually visited earlier on uh, today, I believe. I did, We'll yes. show the film of, of what you found uh, a little later on. But for the moment, from both of you, thank you very much indeed. Now, we also have another expert, of course. He's a historian, an author. He's also a ghost expert. And some say he is one of the funniest historians in Britain, if you watched last night's programme. It is, of course, Richard Jones. A very good evening to you, Richard. Um, did, you, did you recover from last night? Just about, yes. I'm on, I'm on my best behaviour tonight. I should hope so, after what you did to me. Right, moving on to uh, tonight's location. Again, without telling us too much, I was saying nearly a thousand years of history, all sorts of punishment and torture. I mean, the stories here are good, aren't they? Very good stories and a very, very good history indeed. It, it, the site itself does go back a long way. And uh, it's a fantastic area of London as well, because there's a lot of history in that area and a lot of outlawed history as well. I won't go into the reasons why at this moment, but uh, it certainly is fascinating. OK, now, in terms of the fact that it's been used for various buildings on that particular location, i.e. it's changed throughout the years, do you think that will change our investigation tonight? I think it could well do, yeah. I think uh, we're, in a, I say, we're in a different area and we're in I say, a different type of location with a different type of history and uh, not, not as an exact history as we had last night. OK, well, thank you very much indeed. So we sort of teased you with tonight's location. So, a lot of history, punishment and torture and beatings and imprisonment. It's quite a story. And here it is. This museum is built on the very foundations of the UK's oldest jail, the original Clink Prison. This place was renowned for the ill-treatment, torture and brutality towards its unfortunate inmates. The museum setting depicts the horrific conditions which inmates had to endure, complete with some original artefacts. Astonishingly, though nothing of the original building remains, many staff tell of frequent, staggering supernatural experiences. A boy is seen moving through the museum and disappearing through a wall. A young lady has been reported sitting on the floor, shaking and rattling her shackles. 
But why are these spirits here? Who are they? Why are they unwilling to vacate this site? We hope to gain a better insight. So there's the story of tonight's location. Well, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. So it's time to grab a cushion, hide behind the sofa and watch this. Okay, well here we are, we're actually um, inside the Clink prison, um, and just, it's absolutely pitch, pitch black. Can you see, if I just shine my torch down there, Derek, you alright, yes, Kieran, okay. can you see? Yes, yes, yeah, I'm fine. Alright, <coughs> now, because basically there's lots and lots of small areas around here, um, little rooms on this ground floor, so if you want to actually maybe just, do you want me to keep talking while you basically yes. push up on would energies or yes, is that, would that help you a it bit more? It would actually, yes. All right. Yeah. How is this, Kieran, for you, this particular location? How this are you is, feeling? This is quite exciting. I know a little bit about this location. Um, I actually feel fine coming in here. The reason why I find this quite interesting is because, uh, you know, there are visual prompts around and it would be quite interesting to see what comes out from Derek, mm -hmm. you know, and trying to really get to the meat of actually what went on here yeah. or you know what sort of things have been seen or yeah. heard that sort of stuff so quite interesting what's going to happen okay. tonight I mean I feel absolutely fine in this particular area mm -hmm. um, how do you how does the rest of the crew feel Carl Stuart John how, how are you feeling I, I, I feel absolutely fine I, I, I do feel that the atmosphere is, is, a, is heavy in here but I feel fine with it I mean, it's certainly warmer than it is outside Mm -hmm. It's true uh, this morning time I feel good uh, and I'm excited about tonight yeah I don't feel scared whatsoever John, um, I'm okay. I am okay. I don't. I don't, I don't feel nervous. I feel absolutely fine okay. um, so far. Okay. Good. All right. Anything, Derek? You about? Well, just as you were talking, and I know all the team were talking there. I've become aware, um, and it's only from the residual energy. It's not um, a, a, an active spirit person. What I want to talk about a person whose energy has been displayed here. Mm -hmm. How far back, I don't know at this moment in time. Mm -hmm. But you see, I want to go into a pose of clasping my hands, because I was doing that a moment ago, mm -hmm. and I wanted to bend my head and then just walk around as if I was praying. Mm -hmm. Now, that sounds probably ludicrous. We're in a place like this, and I feel that we've got the energies of a man that walks around here on a regular basis who is, is a cl of clergy, and um, a very uh, high office, I feel, because I feel so important about the soul for some reason. And yet, you would think a person of the cloth, a person of faith, uh, would be of serene character. I feel that this soul is, is, is seemingly lost. He doesn't seem to be happy. He doesn't seem to be um, content. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, I'm not saying that he's displaying anger when he walks around, but I feel as if he wants to, the only way I can describe it at this moment, he, he wants to get even. That's the only thing I can say. There's a feeling I want to get even with something, with this man of the cloth. So is he, uh, you want, the, man, the man of the cloth wants to get even with something? Yes. And so is he agitated? Yeah, but there is a certain amount of agitation with him. I, I feel, um, because I'm picking this from the residual energy, he is active at times in here and higher, higher up, I feel. Mm -hmm. um, I've not been around this before, but I feel as if I want to go into a big room mm -hmm. with this man. Mm -hmm. and, but he could just come down here. Mm -hmm. There's also, I'm aware of a, a young boy laughing mm -hmm. and he's running. And it seems as if the clergy, the man, sees this child, mm -hmm. this boy, and I feel the boy is in the atmosphere as well. Mm -hmm. He runs, he doesn't walk, he runs. Mm -hmm. And this boy, um, I feel he calls out, he, he, he shouts out, and I feel his laughter with this boy as well. And yet, I feel sorrow. I'm starting to feel... And yet, I feel sorrow. I'm starting to feel as if I just want to fall down on my knees and cry and scream because I feel as if this area is putrid. This area is, is so, so bad. It's like as if, ooh, someone wants to do me injury, someone wants to hurt me. How old is this little boy? I, I feel this little boy wouldn't be any older than four or five. Right. And I feel so wretched with this little boy. Um, so what time period are you talking about here? When, feel, when would he have been here? I feel that this little boy, we're going back to something in the region, bear with me. Oh, it goes way back this heavy. Mm-hmm. Has anyone been really changed then? Or, 
Well, the keys or something. I heard, yeah, like a jingling. Yeah. Uh, no, no one's moving. No one moving. But I heard like it. a change. Which direction, didn't it? Which direction did it? It come seemed to come from, from over here. Who's going? This little, this little boy comes from about it's 1640 yeah. something. 1640. Right. 1640. Okay. If you can get a name, that would be really good. Should we just go? Yeah, where do you say you heard this? this? Did anyone else hear it? Yeah. No, I, 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 I heard it. Where from, from Carl? I didn't. It seems to be so around here. On sound. <coughs> no one else up here heard that. A what? There's a chain. Where? Yeah. Well, let's know where that makes a sound, though. No, not unless, unless it's bashed against something. Would it have been this? That's the webcam there. Wait a minute. No, the webcam was doesn't even bit. Yeah, it wouldn't even. No, it wasn't. It was like a, um, a heavy chain. It was heavier than that. Okay. All right. Are you aware of any spirit presence here now? You're talking about, you talked about yes. residual energy, no, weren't you? No, I'm not picking up um, a spirit energy presence mm -hmm. here in this uh, ground floor or level at this moment. Mm -hmm. I am also picking up, as we've just come into this area, we've only moved a matter mm -hmm. of feet, but I've just seen that this place seems to be engulfed in flames. And it's a, a oh, it's it's the smoke everywhere, mm -hmm. and I, I I I just feel as if a major fire or f this place engulfed in flames. When when was that? Oh God! Can you help me with this? Um, again, I feel we're going back with this. Mm -hmm. Back in time. Well, we're going back with this. Back in time. Seventeen, one seven, seventeen, seventeen hundred and something, mm -hmm. um, and it was in the flames. It's like is it, everything was destroyed. Mm -hmm. Everything was just burned to the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, let's just. I, I do know for a fact that that Max, the dog, is is here. So what I would like to do is maybe bring Mark and Max in. Is that all right? Can we do that? Yeah. Just have a, let him have a wander around and see if he can actually pick anything up. For, cause some, for me, I find it absolutely fascinating. I don't know how you feel, Kieran, yeah. about the dog, if it picks anything mm -hmm. up. Well, coming in here, first off, it is going to be like a fishing mm -hmm. exhibition for, you know, for Derek. But also, it's great to have the dog to come in and kind of see if he senses anything. Mm -hmm. And we know from the last two nights that we seem to be getting something. You okay. know, Max mm -hmm. is certainly sensitive to something. And so it's, very, it's very warm in here, isn't it? It's it not is. cold at it's all. Mm -hmm. So if anybody senses anything, I feel, I still feel absolutely fine mm -hmm. in this location. I don't feel worried in the slightest. But it's interesting that you pick up on this little boy that's running all the time, mm -hmm. but you don't feel his presence. It's not in his spirit body, in this atmosphere yet. Right, okay. Well, and this, and this, okay. And did you say that they came from the same time period? The, I feel they would have the holy man around and the same time. Yes. Right, okay. Um, what do you think he's running from? I feel that this little boy. Um, I don't know why, but I feel as a, a sense of incarceration with this little boy. Mm -hmm. um, and but I don't feel that he left his physical body through. Um, his life being taken from him. I feel as if there was a, a disease, something that caught hold of him. Right. Um, it could be, I, I can't tell the disease, but it's something that would affect his breathing. Okay. Um, and I feel that's how he come out of his physical body. Is Max here yet? Yeah? He's on his way. He's still on his way. Okay. Do you want to have a bit more of a, a wander through? Because we can always can we, come yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. We can yeah. always come back to specific areas. Okay, we're just waiting for Max um, and Mark to come here. So um, it's back to the studio. Um, we've already heard some chains clanking, so I don't know what Matthew thinks of that, because uh, no one was actually in the particular room. Uh, we were away from the sound, so I'm intrigued to hear what Matthew thinks to that. So it's back to the studio. Well, thank you very much indeed. I'll ask you in a minute, Matthew. Uh, but what a great start to tonight's show already. And as usual, this is very much an interactive show. We want to hear what you think about what's going on. And here to tell you how to do that is the man who's in charge. He's the captain of our interactive ship. It could only be Julian Clegg. Thanks, David. And 
what a night we had last night. Just to say, last night, uh, over 335,000 visits to the website, nearly a million page impressions. Just putting that in perspective, quite incredible. Now, once again tonight, we want you to get involved in the program, and we have our webcams in action on our website, Most Haunted Live. Net. Let's just look at a map here because we've got the map which will show you where the four webcams are uh, tonight. You can see them come up there on the site where the crew are. And the webcams themselves, webcam one is near the blacksmith and we can look at the actual cameras now. If we look at those, all four will come up. Uh, webcam one is in the blacksmith. Webcam two is in the torture chair. Webcam three, coming up in just a moment, is the main room, and webcam four is the first floor. So look at those webcams. They're always incredibly busy every time we do this. Uh, say, of course, uh, where you are and where you're from when you get in touch, and then text this number, 83088, with your messages, please. And then start your message haunted, then a space, then MSG, and then your name and location, please. Uh, or fax us, 0208 986 5981. Or send your text photos, very importantly, to 77725 203049. Now, on the photo messages, two things to bear in mind. One is please get permission from who you're taking any pictures of uh, so they, they know they might appear on the television later on. And we particularly want to hear from you if anything odd has happened at home or we've had any paranormal or spooky experiences in your house on your photo messages, please. So that number again, 07725 203049. They cost 50 people a standard network charges. They're available to UK phones. Get permission from whoever pays the bill, and you must be over 18 to get involved in that as well, please. And of course, the website, mosthauntedlive.net, has all the details. Now, our competition tonight. Very excited about the prize uh, tonight. Uh, tonight's winner will receive a 42-inch Panasonic digital plasma television, a Sony DVD player, and a copy of all the most haunted DVD releases today. Now, we reckon we've got our tape measure out. This is a 42-inch plasma set, so you can have one this big in your living room if you're a winner tonight. It's a fantastic prize, so win the plasma TV and all those uh, DVDs. And then 10 runners-up also receiving the new DVD, which is out tomorrow, which is uh, Series 2. And actually, I love this, because it's got press here to hear Yvette scream. So shall I do that, see whether it works? Here we go. Just about here. There. If you'd like to win that box set, you could if you're a runner-up on the competition uh, tonight. Now, how to get involved, of course, on that is to dial this number, 09015 And, of course, the important question, which is, during which Most Haunted Live did Yvette, Derek and the team appear to make contact with the Coven of Witches? Was it A, Elstree, B, Pendle Hill, or C, Mize Arthro. Now, if you think you know the answer to that, you dial the number 09015-339910. Or if you're a digital satellite viewer, press your red button right now. It costs one pound to enter. You could be a winner later on. More from Interactive later. David, back to you. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed, Julian. Uh, very quickly, Matthew, Yvette just mentioning there she could hear chains clanking. Thoughts? Um, well, I don't think we heard them, but I don't doubt that there, that there were chains clanking again. Not controlled conditions, there's lots of people down there, and there are lots of places where there are chains there with various kind of torture equipment. So, not impressed yet. Plenty of, plenty of time, though. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. But al although, uh, already tonight, Derek appears to be picking up on this clergyman of high office, um, and this uh, fire, major fire in 17-something, where everything, he said, burnt to the ground. And a little boy, aged four or five, incarcerated. He mentions the date 1640 but he feels he died of a disease. What was that disease? Who was the boy? And what was the fire? Find out in a few minutes' time. Tonight, three of the most haunted live at Halloween. Thank you for all your messages already. Uh, particularly to Richard Shoebridge in Burgess Hill in Sussex, who says, now there's a most haunted dog on the team, this is l even more like watching Scooby-Doo. <laughs> now, if Eva is Daphne, Carl is Fred, and Kath is Velma, who is Shaggy? So perhaps you'd like to let us know. <laughs> that was David Wells pointing at Matthew. Um, and Gary Adams in Hitching says he feels it's going to be a really good show tonight. Good luck to all of our investigative team, but also to his girlfriend, Laura. Will you marry me? I love you. Aww. So do let us know. 
Okay, already we've uh, picked up, or Derek appears to have picked up, various spirits. So, a clergyman, this boy, and possibility of this fire which burnt everything to the ground. Let's go and rejoin the team and find out what's going on. Say yes, Laura. You have to say yes to marrying that lovely man. And we think here that John Gilbert is definitely shaggy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> As you can see, we're all feeling a little bit... We're all feeling jovial here. We don't feel at all frightened or anything. We feel absolutely fine. Max is here, our own Scooby-Doo. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk around and Max is going to follow me and see if Max picks anything up. Okay, Mark? Yes. All right, just watch your footing here, love. Now, I might take you to the wrong rooms because I don't really know where. Is this, this bit here? Oh, he's off. <laughs> Just go where he takes you, Mark. Go where he takes you. Good boy. Good boy. What the hell to do there? Good boy. Oh, it's just a Is that a door? Yeah. Oh, he's up there. Um, wandering around but not knowing where to go. Good boy. Is this normal, Mark, when he goes into somewhere new? Does he sort of, you he, know? He will survey the area and yeah. check it out, yeah. But he's fine, he doesn't he's, seem... No, he's actually fine at the moment. He's okay. Is he alright to stay with us for now? Yeah, yeah, he's fine. Okay. Now, Derek, while Max has been wandering around and uh, picking up, hopefully, on something, he seems excitable. Have you got any more? information that you can give to us? Well, whilst we've been walking around, just about a couple of moments ago, I seemed to walk into an area and suddenly it was like a bolt um, from my feet to my head mm -hmm. and I seemed to be like taken back and the whole area, even though it's pitch black here now, mm -hmm. I seem to be transported to a different environment mm -hmm. than this and I, I just feel as if there's been an awful lot of, how can I put it, um, but barbaric, um, um, barbaric doings, barbaric um, conditions, and yet it's like as if I want to come away from this building or in the area in which I am now and go to a different environment altogether. It seems as if like as if I go back to a different environment altogether. It seems as if like as if I go back and some atrocities, some terrible, terrible things have happened in this area. What sort of things? Well, I just feel, I mean, we're here down in this area that appears to be like a, a, a cells and jail, like a jail, mm -hmm. and yet it's not indifferent to that, but a different building altogether, mm -hmm. totally. Mm -hmm. And um, I've become aware again from the residual energy of one individual who would have, and I, I feel as if we go way back with this, way back. What sort of, what sort of year are you getting an exact year for this? Well, I was getting what was coming to my uh, mind, 
um, 1,200 and something, 1,265. That's way back then, isn't it? 1,265. And, what sort of and even building, before that. What sort of building would it have been there? Are you picking up on what kind of building it could have been? Quite simple. To me, it was like a prison okay. where people were held, men, women, children, mm -hmm. and they were butchered, they were tortured, they, the screams that's in this uh, energy here. And this, this child that you picked up as well, yes. who was saying he was part of that prison? I feel he was. So Nothing he was here in 16 something or other. Yes, so yes. 1640, so from right yes. back to that time period, right up to the 1600s, it was a prison. Most definitely. Right, it had time. to be because the conditions with me. Yeah. It's like I just wanted to break down and cry because right. what, I, what I saw, mm. just quickly, just in brief mm. um, psychic uh, vision, uh, I'm seeing treatments to people that were just. You, you couldn't imagine. I just, I've just heard something to the left of me. I don't know if John picked it up. It was very, very quiet. It was like a. Okay. I, I heard something just, just as you looked over your shoulder. I heard something. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was it. like a kind of just a. Okay. Mm. That was it. Okay. Did anybody else hear it? John heard no, something. Then. So John did hear that. Okay. I heard so something. Possibly listen back to that. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Now, just to let you know, what we've done is we've actually sent the rest of our team upstairs. Now they're in front of one of the webcams. Richard's on the walkie-talkie, so I'll just check to see if everything's okay. Richard, it's Yvette. Is everything all right with you up there? Things are uh, happening up here. We're hearing noises. Um, we've heard something uh, scrape a stone across the floor and two grunts. And uh, we don't like it. Oh, that's interesting. Um, now, what I think we should do is maybe set up and do a seance straight away. Do you mm -hmm. think? Yeah, fine. Keep yeah. the guys up there. Do you think, Carl? Yeah, I, I just, uh, yeah. Make, make sure that they, I know it's very difficult, but if they can stay as close to the webcams as possible so the viewers can actually see what they're doing. Yeah. Okay. If we can let Richard know that. I know it's yeah. very difficult, yeah. um, but I think, yeah, keep them up there. That's great. All right. So I just heard a rumble there. There has to be a train by here, doesn't there? Did anybody else hear the rumble? Yeah, I heard that. We'll check one of those trains. Cool. Could be something. I'm going to throw back to the studio now. Whilst we set up for a seance, we'll keep the rest of the team up there. And because uh, <laughs> it sounds like something's happening up there. So it's back to you in the studio. Well, thanks very much. Now, that's uh, very intriguing indeed because Derek uh, says that he comes up with this date, 1265, a prison where he felt people were butchered and tortured. And then this little boy in the date he gave was 1640. Again, he feels very strongly this was still a prison. But was it a prison? What else happened on that site? Find out in a few minutes' time. live on this night three of Halloween. Now, you may remember that Richard Shoebridge wanted to know who was Shaggy. Well, lots of you have let us know what you think. Thanks so much for these. Uh, Stuart uh, should be Shaggy, according to Sharon in Bracknell, Jill in Caffilly, and Bryn in Solihull. Duncan in Derby says it has to be Richard Felix, but uh, Gavin near Salisbury says it should be me. <laughs> Thanks very much. Now, the team are investigating tonight a location which has nearly 1,000 years of history. We've talked about the torture that went on there, the imprisonment. Now, you have to be a very brave person to join our investigative team, indeed. But one dream is about to come true for one of our studio audience, because what we've done, we've actually drawn one name out at random from hundreds of willing volunteers. So just when the studio audience was sitting there looking very comfortable, the person joining the investigation team tonight is... Maria Loft. Maria, where are you? Stand up. Maria's 32. She's a library manager. Maria, go and join Tiffany, who will make sure you're taken out to tonight's location. So there you see Maria being escorted out of the building to join our team on location tonight. Great stories, great history. Already Derek seems to be picking up on things on location. So let's go and join the team and find out what they're uncovering. 
Okay, what we're doing is we're actually just about to start a seance now. Uh, as you know from before the break, we actually sent up the rest of the, uh, the crew um, and they were reporting hearing some grunting noises and like a sound of a stone being dragged across the floor. So they're still up there now. The walkie-talkies is, is in the middle of the seance table. Also, Max and Mark, I think he's just popped up for a, a bit of water, but he's coming back in. Um, and also, Kieran, you just did an experiment on Carl with water. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, Carl had this theory that sometimes when we're doing seances and people report a drop in temperature, that certainly when we have breaks, you know, we try and rehydrate ourselves and drink cool water, and that if you actually drink that, maybe there's a delayed period and your body temperature does actually reduce as a result and of drinking water. And everybody will go, oh, I feel really cold, I feel really yeah, cold. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And certainly we're picking up that slightly on Carl's throat already. Okay. It's a reduction. All right. Okay, then. Shall we join hands? Okay. Fingers touching. Keep your feet uncrossed. Okay, Derek, do you want to start? Okay. We ask the highest and the noblest of thoughts to surround us and protect us from any negative energies of intent. And we ask this in the name of love. Okay, Evie. Okay. <clears throat> if there is any people, any spirit people in this building now, please hear my voice. Please hear my voice. Come forward. Any spirit people, any astral beings that haunt this place, that were once incarcerated here, who still are around, please come forward and try and talk to us. Are you trapped? Do you wish to see your loved ones in heaven? If you do, please... Are you tapping on the table, Carl? No, why would I be tapping on the table? No, I know, I know. I just wondered if you'd moved your hands. No. No, there was did no anybody move their hands? No one did. No, no, I just felt like no. it came from over there. I just heard two, two very soft taps on the table, like someone has just tapped the top of the table twice. And another one. I just heard that. If there is anybody here, any spirit person, that feels trapped and needs our help, we're here to help you. And another one. I'm not, I'm not actually That's on the anything. floor, that wasn't on the table, I can hear it on the well, floor. My feet, if you want a few pounds, my feet are actually not touching the floor. Yeah. If there is any spirit person here, any astral beings that wish to communicate with us in any way, come and talk to us. Come and tell us that you're here. We don't mean you any harm. We're here to... I heard that. I did. It sounded like it was coming from the floor. Mm. I'll take my earpiece out because I'm not hearing that. Okay. Okay. Are you here? If there is a spirit person or spirit people here that still haunt this place that feel trapped, please can you tap on the table twice? Can you hear those two taps? No. Yes. I heard two. I just heard two, but I just assumed there was somebody walking. Yeah. Everybody keep really still. I'm going to kneel down so I can get right in there. Right, I, should, I heard them from behind me. There's no one there. If there are any astral beings here now and you're trying to communicate with us, please, can you make the knocks louder? There's one. There's one. Did you get it, John? Yeah. Just and again, please, please tap again much louder. Do you get that, John? Yes. Okay. Are you a male spirit? Please tap once for yes. Are you female? Tap once for yes. Are you a child? Are there many of you here? Oh, there you go. There's many. I just got a real cold blast right across yeah, my head. Yeah, it's gone very cold right round my mm. oh, right round my legs. There are many spirit people here because it actually banged in response to that question. Yeah, is there any difference in the temperature? Round our feet, round our legs. I do get a draft coming over from. The... Ooh, no, oh, wow, flipping heck! Yeah. That, that was above. like a real blast yeah, of, on our hands, wasn't it? Was, yeah. I see it. There's a green. I can see that green there. Right? Wow, that was really strong. Okay. Do you all need our help? If you can hear my voice, do you all need our help? Do you all feel trapped here? That was one, wasn't it? It was another knock. Okay. 
Can you do something for us? We won't leave. We will help you. We will help you. Before we leave here, we will release you so you can see the light and you can go to your loved ones. Do you understand? Tap once if you understand. Yes. Did you hear it? Yeah. Okay. Before we do that, if you understand me, please, can you do something? Can you do something? Can you do something to affect us here? Can you move something? That was a little knock. Okay, yeah. That was that, yeah, definitely a tap. Can you do something for us now, please? Can you affect the electricity? Or well, show yourself to us. Come amongst us now. We don't mean you any harm. Oh, did you feel that Ooh, call? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last oh. flip in heck. Yeah, that yeah, was so that. Yeah. strong. Yeah. Good grief. Okay, and again, please. That was fantastic. Please blow upon our faces. Touch us. We don't mind. We just really want to know that you're around. In the name of God, please come forward. We don't mean you any harm. We're here to help you this evening. John, I'm getting drafts coming around. Is what coming around? Just uh, I'm showing drafts coming around. Drafts coming around, really? Leaves. Do you want to get that on yeah. camera? Should we move our fingertips to the edge of the table? Yeah. Okay. Please, if you can hear my voice, I would ask you with so much respect, can you try and move this table for us? Oh, wow, did you hear that? No, it's not. It's a big knock. Can you move this table, please? Please move this table. If there are many of you here, we will help you. Here we go. Yeah, going, going. There you go. Oh. oh. Please, there are many of you here. We promise we will not leave you here. But you must help us. I've got my finger to just hovering over the top of this mine table. Mine off. Mine are even touching. Mine are off. Mine are off. Okay. Please, could you try and lift the table off the floor for us? Please, if there are many of you here, and I know you can do this, Use our energies. Take our energy from us. Move the table again for us. But try and lift it in such a way we know that it's not us that's moving it, but you. Come around us now. Please don't be frightened. Move the table again for us if you can. Move the table again. But see if you can move it in a much more violent manner. Good grief. Wow, it's shaking. A much more violent manner. A much more violent manner, please, we promise we will not leave here without helping you. You will be released, you will see your loved ones in heaven tonight, I promise you. Move the table, really move it for us, all of you. Try and get underneath it and push it up. Push it up, if you can. Come on, harder for us, please. Please, much harder. We know you can do it. We're not asking for you to do party tricks. We just want to know this is really you. Wow. Did you hear that? Well, welcome back to Most Haunted Live at Halloween. This is the most talked about show on British television. And tonight... Once again, it's talked about in the United States because over 100,000 people are now watching on the east and west coast of America on our webcam. So a very good evening and welcome to all of you. Welcome to all of you. Now, tonight we're investigating a location which has a notorious history. It has a very dark atmosphere and the team are continuing their investigation. is I'm going to actually ask out. What I'm going to do now is ask out because the other investigators are upstairs. I'm going to ask out um, the spirit people that are down here now and see if some of them can go upstairs and affect the other crew. Good thing. Okay. Okay. Are you still with us? Are you still with us, please? Friends, come forward. Are you still with us? Yes. I will ask you now, we have many friends upstairs. We have many friends above us, in the room above us. 
Could you please go and do something around them? Could you do something around them for us? Something that they can hear and see. Maybe you can do that for us. Please tap in response. Can you do that for us? Please, Father Gerald, if it's you, do that. Make that noise again. Summon up the energy and do it again. I've got the biggest pain going right the way atop my head. There, it's shooting. It's right there, right now. It's just come on me. Oh, the western. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. Okay. It's like a headache, sharp pain, or a dull pain. It's a very, very sharp pain. What is that noise? What is that noise? The cash till just started to go off on its own. I'm gonna go check. Okay. Come on, kids, if you're really a deuce, please carry on. Okay, they've heard something upstairs. Yeah. They've heard something upstairs when I asked them to do something. They've just heard something. Fantastic. Really okay. responded. All right. right, that's fantastic. And the cash oh, till's gone off as well. Yeah. I don't know if we no, caught the noise in the studio, here, but there was like a... I f at first I thought it might have been a webcam what moving, it? but it's definitely the cash till just going off on its own. Now, where... There's no one in there at all. And it's just gone off on its own. Still going, yeah. Do you want to go and can you do you want to go, John, and have a look? Yeah. Yeah. We'll stay here with the webcam. Okay. Okay. Still going. Can you hear the cash register going? Oh, I see the two roll, yeah. Okay. Join hands again. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Stop. It's just coming and goes every now and again. It's really weird. It's moving in there, all doors are locked. The exact time is 10pm. The exact time is 10pm, so we need to check with the owner if it's done some automatic cashing up. And again, please, friends, please, again, move the table. Please. Are you still here with us, friends? Again. Please move the table again. John is tapping. John is yeah. tapping. Just on the table. Was that was that you, John, that just made that noise behind you? It's yes. Like yeah. Yeah. That was me. Got my foot on yours. You got your foot on mine. Okay. Yeah. Please move the table again. It's really rapping hard. Move the table again for us. Please, can you move it? in such a way that we have to stand up. Come forward, come forward, please don't leave us. Don't leave us. Move the table again. Are you getting it, John? Yeah, it's very faint. Yeah. Okay. And he's a little... Are these, are there, are you children? Yeah. Yeah. are children? Yes. Can you move the table for us again, please, children? Please play with us. All of you together, try and move this table. Come on. Here we go. Who's moving on? I've got quite a lot of weight on it. Okay. I can't just turn it off. Put your hands back. Put your hands back. Do you want to see your mummies and daddies again? Ooh. We'll send you on your way. We will, promise. Just, just play with us some more. Do something else in this building for us now. Come on, sweethearts. Do something else for us in this building now. Come on. Come on, sweethearts. Do something. Do something. Why do you turn constant looking? Yeah. Yeah, it's mm. just constant knocking the tables going. Come on, please, keep going, children. Keep going. Go on. Really move this table. Maybe if you could crawl underneath it and push it up with your hands, that would be really fun. Can you do that? Go on, try and do that. Go on, you can do that. Get under the table and really push it up with your hands. Come on, come on. Come on. Is Max around, Andy? Yeah, I'm going for you. Yeah. Come on, do you like dogs? Do you like dogs? 
No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah, but probably Completely there, somebody stuck. wouldn't really have had pets of stuff, would they? Or would that? I don't know. I don't know. No, just no. haven't a clue. It's just interesting that they're definitely here. They're all around mm. us. Mm. The knocks were just unbelievable. That, like, really <laughs> under the table yeah. like that. Can you do something else for us in this room, in this building? Can, can, can we ask, just as an experiment, can we ask for knocks? Because yeah. you seem to be getting a lot of results. If we ask for knocks, and then halfway through the knocks, ask them to stop. Okay. Right. Just so we can, we can take away okay. from everyone else that, okay. yeah, the, the fact that it's not something else that we're just tapping okay. into. Yeah. Can, we, yeah. can we try it with palms up? Palms mm -hmm. up, yeah. yeah. It's okay. Right. okay. Are you still with us? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to bring him quite close to the table, Mark? Can you see the dog here with us? Oh. Can you see? Are you frightened of the dog? Children are frightened of the dog. Oh, Max. Can you sense anything, Max? Uh -huh. Can you see the dog? He's a friendly dog. Oh, I know that. What's the matter? I've just had a real cold, it was like a real cold breeze, but it was followed by a, a like a, quite a, a rancid oh, right, smell. Mm. Quite a, an unpleasant <coughs> smell. Yeah. 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 It doesn't seem to be bothered by the table, does it, at the minute? Okay. I just get, there was just, it was a breeze, a real strong breeze, but then it was like, like I say, it was like quite a rancid smell, like a, okay. I don't know, rotten. Do you know what I think we should do? I think what we should do now is leave leave this tape leave this table here. Whoa! Yeah, knock it out. getting out, John. Yeah, four of them. Wow! Bang, bang, bang. Can you hear me, please? Please. Right, Max. We're going to leave this table here, and we're going to go upstairs now. Do you want to come with us? Oh, bang, 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 bang. Shh. Do you want to come with us? Are you going to follow us upstairs? Okay. Now, Derek, in this situation, mm -hmm. do you actually have to close down the table? But because we're still communicating with the spirits, how does that work? Well, if we want to go upstairs, and as, as you've been asking them, will you follow us up? It would be best to keep the conditions open yeah. and not to close it. Okay. We'll do that now. It's back to the studio with David. Um, Max was just doing a little bit of whining there. We've had this amazing knocking. It won't be as loud to you in the studio. Listen to that. I'm going to go. Can you knock again? And again, please. Can you make it really loud for us? And louder, louch, louder. A big bang. A really big bang. Okay, quite quiet. We're going to go upstairs um, now. We'll take take Max with us um, and see, because no one's been upstairs yet. We can always come back down here. This always fascinates me, mm -hmm. this banging. It's absolutely amazing. David, it's back to you in the studio. We're going to um, reposition ourselves upstairs. Wow. Well, strange yeah. stuff indeed seems to be going on at the location. But what are you saying at home? Julian. Thanks, David. Busy, busy, busy. Thank you very much indeed for all your texts, uh, emails and sightings. First of all, Dean and Anne-Marie from Wigan are already hiding behind the sofa. Uh, Alan from Liverpool, Laura from Limvaddy and Krista from Columbus in Ohio all think the team will, be, uh, con or will contact a man named George tonight. And John from Window Rock, Arizona wants Yvette to take care tonight after challenging the spirits in last night's show. Now, let's look at the webcams and update you on people saying on this. Really, really, really busy. First of all, webcam one, uh, here we are, the blacksmiths, and loads of reports coming in from the United States on this one. Kelly and Joe in New York, Kathy in Indiana, and Dustin in Indian, uh, Indianapolis have all seen a shadowy figure of a man standing, standing in the doorway. And Dawn, Ty, and Beth in Orlando say that a man from the 15th century is sitting on the blacksmith's bench. 
Now, webcam two, that's the torture chair. Hundreds of reports of a shadowy figure walking around near the torture chair, including Stephen in Manchester, Tracy in North Hants, Pam and Jeff in Birmingham, and Andy in Virginia. And on webcam three, which is in the main room, Chiara in Ireland can see the word lost on the table. I don't know if you can see that. Andy in Falkirk and Gary and Lisa in Henna warn Yvette to be careful, and Liam Burnley can see a child about nine standing uh, near Yvette on that webcam. And webcam four, let's quickly look at that. Tr Trish in Bury St Edmunds is hearing a constant whistling sound on that webcam. Adam in Sawbridgeworth can see a grey mist following Derek, and Ben and Terry in Birmingham have seen a mist floating by Carl's head. So uh, very busy, most haunted live.net is the web address to see those webcams, so let us know what you think. Now, the photo messages, incredibly popular, as I always say. Again, hundreds and hundreds coming in, 077252030049. And let's have a look at some right now. First of all, Samantha in Essex caught this light next to a candle. Is it an orb? There you are, you can see it there. That's what she, what she asked the question. Samantha in Essex, thank you. Uh, Bex from New Newant uh, photographed this orb next to her TV when David Bull was on air earlier. Trying to work that one out there, but there's something going on down there, so thank you, Bex. And Simon and Jackie in London have no explanation for this strange light behind the chair. Oh, yeah, you can see it there. Uh, right, any thoughts? Well, we will have your photo messages. Please send them in to 07725203049. Get permission from whoever you take a picture of in case they land up on the telly tonight. Uh, details on the website, Most Haunted Live. Net. More from Interactive a little bit later on. David, back to you. Very strange photos indeed, yeah, aren't they? Are Especially that, that one of me. <laughs> Very odd indeed. And also, it's wonderful to get so many comments uh, from our viewers on uh, big, the Travel Channel. Yeah, big response from America tonight. Really Fantastic. Good. Well, and if you are watching on the Travel Channel in the United States, um, we're very pleased to have you with us. Now, obviously, we've had a lot of information that seems to have come out uh, from the location. Let's go and find out from Richard Jones how much of this he can accord with. So, um, Richard, there's a lot to go through here. Um, now, first of all, um, perhaps we'll start with a fire. Well, let's start with a place, because we've talked about incarceration. We've talked about, Derek said, 1265 prison, people were butchered and tortured. Right, well, interesting enough, um, the first mention of the prison on the site, and I should say we're at the Clink prison, uh, and... So it was a prison, right? Yeah, but well, it's more or less on the site of the Clink prison. Now, the Clink prison belonged to the bishops of Winchester. Winchester House uh, was just, out, just around that area. And it was actually initially set up, according to John Stow in his survey of London in 1509, uh, it was to punish those who broke the peace in the bishops' brothels. As a consequence of that, it then became sort of the, the prison that gave its name to all others. It was the Clink prison, uh, basically. Uh, but interesting enough, uh, something quite interesting I've, has come up on my monitor down here because I've been watching the text coming in from home. And Lee and Helen in Catterick have actually said that the letter G will be important tonight. And interesting enough, Winchester House was actually built for William Gifford in 1109, the Bishop of Winchester. Okay, what about these dates? Because uh, Derek mentioned 1265, 1614, and was very sure that it was a prison of sorts throughout uh, those years. Is that, is that true? Well, this is the problem. We've got the first mention of it in 1509, but it doesn't mean there wasn't a prison there on that site. Uh, the bishops certainly were punishing wrongdoers in the area. Uh, so there was probably a prison on the site at the time. Okay, now what about all these children? Were any children ever incarcerated there? I've got nothing on children being incarcerated in the prison uh, as such. I mean, later on it became a debtor's prison. Now, it was actually quite common for, when debtors were taken to prison for the families to move in with them. Uh, this, this, for example, happened to Charles Dickens when his father, John Dickens, was imprisoned in another nearby prison called the Marshalsea. And uh, his entire family moved in with him, with the exception of Charles, who was sent okay. to work. And what about this fire that apparently destroyed everything? This fire that apparently destroyed everything? The fire is probably a reference to the year 1780 when the Gordon riots swept across London. And the Gordon rioters, uh, the anti papers riots, they, the Gordon rioters burnt down the prison, which by that stage had become so uh, rotten. And it way. was raised to the ground? It was raised to the ground and they never rebuilt it because it had just become so ruinous. Great stuff. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So our investigation continues in what we've now heard is a prison. It's one of the UK's oldest jails. But what spirits and ghouls will reawake? Find out on Most Haunted Live after the break. <laughs> 